Bonjour, mesdames, messieurs. I just got hired by the city of Las Vegas to reshoot all the official photo of Las Vegas. My biggest contract so far in the last 17 years as a photographer. So if you're struggling as a photographer or if you want to go to the next level, I'm going to give you five tips that made me hundreds of thousands of dollars as a photographer. And I'm going to show you how we can get iconic photos of Vegas and how you can make money by doing commercial work. Whether it's with a drone, we're going to go to rooftop, we're going to rent a helicopter, we're going to go to the most iconic places in Vegas. Let's do it! Viva Las Vegas! Tip number one, that's how I got this job here in Vegas. Make sure that you have a website where you SEO, search engine optimization, your photo. They found me on Google Image and I was against 40 other photographers and they came to my website and they thought my work was the strongest and they hired me. But first of all, they found me. So how did they find me? Every time I post a photo, I make sure that the file name itself, let's say I'm shooting the Louvre, that the file name is like Louvre-Paris, Dot jpeg and also i give a title on the photo and a little description using the keywords very important a new website has to be like a either wordpress a slick peek or squarespace like an html website that google is actually going to index that's very important to get out on google image that's how i got this job that is probably how i got the most money that's how i got my publisher that's how i got most of it google image made over a million dollars with google image all right so i got up really early uh we actually already took the photo because now it's getting too bright but just about the settings because i'm shooting for the city of los angeles because i'm shooting for the city of las vegas i I'm on a tripod, I want every photo to be the most perfect, meaning 100 ISO, like F7, F8, which is like the sweet spot of that 24-70 lens. Mwah! So it's very sharp and uh, whatever speed. And then I'm, do I'm doing a pano in portrait mode so I get more sky. It, it, I take a lot of photos, like, like maybe seven or eight photos, and then I'm gonna spend time putting them together. Sometimes I'm even doing HDR panorama, meaning I'm taking three exposures, you know, just to make sure I have everything. The moment has passed, but I'm happy because I got up very early before my cameraman and got some cold shots. So I'm gonna be shooting mostly with a Sony. We're just waiting for the fountain to turn on so that we have a nice foreground element, very important. I think the city of Las Vegas wants to have the fountain as a foreground. So we're waiting for that. We're waiting for the Eiffel Tower to really turn on. So hopefully it's gonna be perfect, meaning it's right after sunset, the beginning of the blue hour. So you have a lot of city lights and not everything, you know, not everything is uh, fully uh, dark yet. You still have detail. Yeah, one technique I, I have learned uh, from a great photographer like Peter Leakey is when you have a beautiful scene, you take photos every half an hour and then you can sort of mix the sky from half an hour before to half an hour after. We might need to do that tonight because we had a beautiful magenta sky at one point and we lost it and now we're waiting for the fountain. So we take the sky that was half, so it's kind of a sky replacement, but we're not cheating because it's that exact same sky, that exact same view, just like 10 minutes before. It's called time blending sky. Yeah, we lost all the magenta in the sky, but I'm gonna add, I'm gonna paint some back just for beauty. Yeah, there's so much dynamic range with the waterfall that I'm shooting them in HDR so that I can have, uh, I can mix the highlights and the shadows. Look at that, it's beautiful. Woo! So I'm walking around this morning. The city's asked me to do what I call texture shot, like little nice things from Vegas. So for this, for example, I kind of I really like that setup. I never shoot during the light, except when you have interesting shadows. And like, look at the trees and how the shadows are. Maybe it's gonna do a great photo, maybe not. But I guess there's only one way to find out, isn't there? Let's go to Caesar Palace, Ave Cesar. While I was talking to the client in Vegas, uh, they said that the mayor office also wanted some 
uh, like um, blurry shot. I said, what do you mean by blurry shot? Yeah, you know when something is very sharp and everything else is blurry. Lucky I had my Leica Q3 on me, so I walked around for many evenings trying to find like something that's kind of sharp and then making everything blurry. And at 1.7, you get really this nice texture shot. You know, they want to use this for brochure or things like this. So, you know, I thought I was going to do everything with my Sony, but turns out it was really cool to get the Leica to get this really shadow depth of field. I love it, it's incredible. I call it the what is your budget tip. So about two years ago, uh, an agency contacted me to buy this photo of Paris and they asked me how much I wanted for it. I answered the email says I would like to license it for $500. And I erased that email before I sent it and I said, what is your budget? Their answer, 4,000 euros, which is more than $4,000. And I said, yes. Very often in negotiation, if you ask what is their budget, it might be a lot higher than you think. So ask, what is your budget? One of the main reasons Las Vegas wanted to reshoot the photos was because of the sphere, this incredible uh, screen. Uh, we actually went to see the, the sphere show. It's kind of incredible. And uh, it totally changed the, the landscape of Vegas. So originally they wanted me to shoot the sphere from the parking lot. That was like, no, foreground is everything in photography. It's not gonna be nice and look how bad it looks from the parking lot. And then I looked on Google Mac and I see that there is a golf course from the Venetian, I think that's pretty close. So I, I got the authorization to fly my drone there and, and I got this shot. Now on this one, I did sky replacement on it, but I love it, you know. I was going down very close to the water. It was kind of scary because the one thing that you can get in trouble with is with a drone is when you go on a tree, when you try to land on a tree. And it was so dark, I couldn't really see what was going on. So I had my assistant looking where the drone was. Anyway, and this is the final shot that they really love. I think it really shows a sphere. And you see, it looks much nicer having the golf course as a foreground element. Today, we are going to the Chapa to take photos of Vegas with the helicopter. It's gonna be cool. I'm gonna have two cameras. I'm gonna have the Sony 7R5 and the Sony S3 uh, because the S3 is amazing for low light and the S3 is gonna be with a 70 to 300 so that I can really go high in ISO and go with a very high shutter speed. And I'm gonna take the 2470 uh, for most of the shot with a Sony 7R5, which is, so one is a 12 million pixel camera, but it has incredible ISO. And this one is a 60 million pixel, but that's very decent ISO. You gotta be really high in ISO uh, when you get the good shot. So it's, it's a well-balanced, you have to shoot manual, you have to do some test shot, you have to make sure you're sharp. It's gonna be a real challenge, but follow me and let's go Vivo Las Vegas. By the way, all the photos were retouched using the Lightroom Natural Drama preset, which you can get, plus all my three books, my Lightroom book, my Photoshop book, and my book on composition for $1.99. The link is under the video. The reason I'm doing it so cheap is I'm hoping that one day you will allow me to coach you on your photography, and I have a whole coaching program that you may get access. I can't take everybody there, but hope that we can work together on your photo one day. Okay, this one is, comes from Joel Grimes. This is why I was able to move in the US. So years ago, Joel Grimes was explaining that how he was getting job was as the following. When he wants to get a commercial job, he goes into the city, he takes all the art directors of the city, and he sends one photo every Monday to each director with a handwritten letter saying, this is Joel, this is what I do. You know, in the city, an art director is like the guy in the agency who hires photographer. Like for example, Las Vegas does not hire a photographer. Las Vegas hires an agency who hires a lot of photographers. So you want to talk to the art directors of agency. And every Monday he would send a print with a handwritten letter. Not an email, not a type letter, handwritten letter with one photo. And after four weeks he would call the art director and say, I'd love to meet. So how did that change my life? Well, when I heard that story, I went, I was living in Neuilly Plaisance, called to Paris. I went into the little kiosk that's next to my home and I took all the biggest magazine that there was and I wrote to each magazine a handwritten letter, not with one, I did 20 photos, my 20 best photos and I told my story and I, and I gave them a CD. I would, today I would give like a, a bit.ly a link 
with my photos, like a Dropbox link. And I said, you can publish these photos. Out of all the magazines I've sent, everyone published it. One did a, a cover and a six page article on me. It was so much publicity that this is how I got my first celebrity visa to move to the US. And that's how I became an American because of that one trip from Joel Grimes. Well, thank you, Joel. Welcome to the Valley of Fire. Okay, so this morning we took a break from the strip of Las Vegas. We are here in the Valley of Fire, and um, I usually don't take photos during the day, except when you have a beautiful subject like Valley of Fire. And what I should do is I should film. So on this one, I'm gonna shoot Portrait 400. So this is film uh, with the Leica M6, and I'm gonna do something that's kind of cool today. I've got both Leica, I have the Q3 and the M6. So this is digital, this is film. They're both exact same lenses, 28 millimeters, 1.7 or something. One thing I learned about film, if you ever shoot film, make sure you're overexposed by one or two stops because although film does have a better dynamic range than digital, the problem with film is that you have more dynamic range when you shoot, but you don't have more dynamic range when you retouch. So you gotta nail the exposure. So this is 400 ISO, so I'm already, I'm putting it at 200 ISO here. Uh, so it's already gonna overexpose by one stop by default. So now I'm gonna take a photo with this one and a photo with this one and we'll compare the result when it comes back from the lab, Portra 400 versus this. Let's take some photo in the Valley of Fire. You know what would be amazing, Tony, is that if you, I don't know if you, can you, you think you can go on that big rock there? Or no, it, oh, it's hard. I just wanna have the shape of your butt in the sky so that people get a sense of how big this place is. So I'm gonna be shooting at F8, there's a lot of light. I like the exposure I'm getting here, but what I usually used to do, and that was a big mistake, I used to use this as a light meter, don't do that. There is a light meter in the M6 and just overexposed by one or two stops. So I'm already overexposing by one stop on the, on the film, I'm gonna overexpose a second time. I'm trying to give it like a film look also on the Q3, we'll see if we can match the colors in post. All right, okay, now I'm gonna shoot digital, don't move. Now this one I got from the art director at Nike years ago, I got hired and Nike bought this photo from me. And I asked him something, he says, why did you pick me? And he said something that changed my life forever. He says, you know how we know if a photographer is a pro versus an amateur? I said, no, he says a pro has very little photo on their website and they're all amazing. An amateur has a lot of photos on their website. Some of them are amazing, but some of them are very average and it just kills everything. So make sure you have very little photos on the website. Look at my website, for example, searchremedyphotos.com. I have about 20 photos per section and it's my very best work after 17 years. When you come to a beautiful place like this, you know, everybody's taking photos, but I find what works really good is to look for leading lines or like layers of things like a, a nice rock as a foreground, middle ground, background. Anybody can take it as you, but what you put in the first 10 feet of, a, of the thing is gonna make it spectacular. So for example, here, I have a cool leading line with like an incredible cloud. So I'm gonna be shooting that. Uh, I'm looking on my phone. Let's go. I love the, when you have a leading line like this, like a windy road, you know, and, and the cloud, the cloud and the road makes the photo. Let's see. Do you mind if I take you in the shot? Uh, just to have like a scale of a human. I'm gonna go very wide, you're gonna be very small, but it gives a perspective. Okay, so Tony is with us, we put him, I love to have like somebody in the, in the, in the scene to show how you know, big it is. So, you know, if you have a human being, there people having a sense of the scale. So he's our driver and he's our model. Amazing, not quite yet. Last tip, but the most important of all. Years ago, uh, I had a friend who 
was a photographer that I trained and he needed an apartment in Paris. And so he asked me if I could co-sign the apartment, which I did. Three months into it, I get a call by his landlord that he's not paying the rent, but I have to pay for his rent. So I call him up and I say, what's going on? He says, yeah, but you know, I'm a photographer. It's hard to find a job. I can't get any money. It's impossible. There's so many photographers. The competition is crazy. And I told him, I said, okay, I want you to walk into 50 hotels or real estate agency in Paris and show you work. You had incredible work. Do at least 50 and call me back. He called me back two days after. He booked three jobs. Okay, now this is the last day of the shoot, you know. I had to deal with so many staff from two different agencies, making sure they were happy. The weather was not that great, so they were like, at the end of the shoot, I was very afraid that the customer, uh, the CD of the guest, would not like the photos. And then I had this idea, you know, I can replace some of the, of the skies. And they love the idea, because, you know, these photos are gonna stay there forever. Yeah, and they, they, they was like, I proposed them to do sky replacement, and they were like, yeah, it's a great idea. So this is some of my best sky replaced photo which they're gonna be using forever, which I really, really like. And, you know, it was very stressful because it was the first time I was working for such big agency. By the way, all the photos were retouched using the Lightroom Natural Drama preset, which you can get, plus all my three books, my Lightroom book, my Photoshop book, and my book on composition for $1.99. The link is under the video. The reason I'm doing it so cheap is I'm hoping that one day you will allow me to coach you on your photography and I have a whole coaching program that you may get access. I can't take everybody there, but hope that we can work together on your photo one day. Now this free job led him to a lot of more other jobs. In fact, it led him to so much job that he became one of the biggest interior design photographer in France. And now he works for the group Accor. He works for like a big hotel chain and has a lot of photographers. So the moral of the story is don't give up on your dreams until you've spoken to 50 potential customers. Then if you get refused, you can stop. But I promise you, if you're any good, if you're not, follow my channel, you will be good. You can get a job. Don't give up until you've spoken to 50 potential customers. Anyway, if you like this kind of adventure, check out this New York adventure where I had 48 hours to get amazing photos. I'm trying to really do really cool videos. Watch this one and tell me in the comments what you think about it. And make sure you subscribe if you like this kind of videos. I have a lot more coming. I have a new video team. I'm telling you, uh, I'm gonna try to do the best possible value so that you can expand as a photographer. Thank you very much. Merci, au revoir, à bientôt, love you.